Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Andrea and I'm here today with a Marilyn Monroe book haul. It's been a long time since we've done one of these. I tend to save up Marilyn books and do them all in one go. Usually when I get around 10 and there are 10 books in here. Um, so let's crack on. So the first book we did an unboxing of and it's the extremely heavy. The Essential Marilyn Monroe by Milton H. By Milton H. Green 50 Sessions. I have done a full unboxing for this on my channel so if you want to go check that out it's then in the uh, just watch my old videos just go through them and you should be able to find that um, I think it's also under the Marilyn Monroe playlist the next two are two fiction books they, they're actually books one and two of a trilogy so the first one is called Fateful Night and the second one's called Darkest Day and it's called the What She Knew trilogy and it's by K.R. Hughes and T.L. Burns so Fateful Night um, says um, basically on the back it says breaking news did Marilyn Monroe really die in 1962 uh, with pressure to escalate the Vietnam conflict into a full-blown war President Kennedy balked and ordered a thousand troops to begin withdrawing an evil presence frustrated at the lack of cooperation and support from the present decides to have him moved out of the way can Bobby and Peter find the source and stop him just one on the night of Marilyn Monroe's presumed death, Bobby Kennedy and Peter Lawford arrived to Marilyn's house to find her nearly dead. Both men knew that she had vital information that members of the mob, political circles and even somebody much larger would kill for. Replacing the real Marilyn with an overdose double, both Peter and Bobby raced to find out who was behind her suicide as well as what was planned for President Kennedy. All you need is one golden apple, a single apple that somebody else wants and you have control, Alan said. Ari, that's blackmail. So I haven't read this yet but it sounds quite fascinating like I said I've only got books one and two I'll probably pick up book three fairly soon and then I'll probably just binge read them so book two is Darkest Day excuse me when I have a sip of my coke I'm really spilling it everywhere it's just too hot I have no idea what temperature is outside but it's about 27 so same cover Marion's grave on the front picture of Kennedy on the assassination at the, on the back and this one says, on the tragic day of John F. Kennedy's assassination, the nation is stunned. JFK was a president who stood for radical change. His charisma carried him through with never before seen devotion. JFK's presidency was riddled with strife from the Cuban Missile Crisis to the Cold War and finally to the Vietnam conflict. Nothing was easy with him. But why? The dark forces behind the scenes were doing everything they could to sabotage our nation's youngest president. On that dark day in November of 63, Kennedy isn't on a world tour, instead he's in the Alps having back surgery. With Bobby Kennedy, the Attorney General of the USA, running interference, there was little risk that anyone would find out. In fact, no one did. Now the world is mourning and Jack Kennedy must take on a new face and a new life. Darkest Day picks up where Fateful Knife let off, while Castro, Director of Cuba, Khrushchev, Premier of the, United, of the Soviet Union, and the CIA are all grappling for power. Robert Kennedy forms an unlikely alliance to keep the world from imploding. While the most hated enemies of Jack Kennedy continue to find, continue their work to destroy the US, Johnson acts as a willing puppet to line his pockets. Can JFK and Marilyn find out what the end game is uh, before America is ruined? And then the quote at the bottom says, we need to make the people believe we have capped captured the only shooter, Lee Harvey Oswald. So I'm dying to see what book three is about, but um, I haven't had a chance to pick that up yet with uh, everything that's been going on. Oh dear. Her dad's with her, don't worry, she's fine. Next one I picked up is a little pamphlet um, gallery type book called Marilyn Forever by Juliana Marinello. And that's a collectible. And it's, it's filled with I haven't read it, so I don't know. Um, there's an essay called Marilyn Forever by the author. And it's in both it's in both English and Spanish, French, I don't know. It's Italian. I'm gonna say with Italian, I don't know. Yeah, I'd say Italian, something like that anyway. Um, so and then there's On Marilyn by Bruno de Marino. I would say it's Italian. Uh, Marilyn Monroe Myth and Archetype. And then when you get to the pictures, it's sort of, so there's a stool and one with Castro on it, I think. Well, no, Shay. I do tell, I tell like Shay. And then there's 
So there's various different artworks of how Marion has been portrayed. Pictures and posters that you can find of her. A nice little green one there. I'm not, I'm not really, I tell you, it's so hot, I just can't cope with it. Um, what else is in here? There's quotes, so I knew I belonged to the public and to the world, not because I was talented or even beautiful, but because I'd never belonged to anything or anyone else. Uh, artwork. There's a collectible stand up. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what I expected from this, but it's okay. And there's the, the thing off the cover, the figurine. Um, Marilyn collectibles. I always like looking at Marilyn collectibles. Uh, some of them I've got, some of them I don't. So, for instance, I have this. And I have this one. I have a few bits and pieces. I don't have a lot. And I don't collect that much. And there's, there's that in the corner. The Wizard of Oz. Kind of nice. Yeah, so all sorts of nice pair of Marilyn tights. I used to have a pair of Marilyn tights. Marilyn shower curtain. I don't have, but I will be having. Bed spreads. It's, it's just all various different things. I'm going to have to read the essays just to see what it's about. Yeah, it's nice. Just have a quick look. Acknowledgements and author information at the bottom. So I will read that. It's not a very long one, so I might read that quite quickly because I might read that this month. Then if you watch my colouring videos, you know I picked up the Marilyn colouring book. I think I've done a full flip through of this. I'm, I don't know whether I've posted it or not. I probably have. Yeah, here's that one. Then we've got Making Sense of Marilyn. This was uh, by Andrew Norman. It's all right. It's nothing special. There's nothing new in there, so as I'm concerned, I know you know it didn't tell me anything new. Um, but yeah, that's in my June wrap up. So for 2018, to so go check that out. Go into a bit more on it. And we got Marilyn Monroe Unveiled: A Family History by Jason Edward Kennedy and Jennifer Jean Miller. Now Jennifer Jean Miller wrote Marilyn and Joe loving Japan, Korea, and beyond which I really loved and the pictures were really rare. Now, I'm not going to get into the controversy surrounding Jason Kennedy and his Marilyn Monroe family and what people think of him. I'm just going to evaluate the book itself. Because um, I know a lot of people don't won't read this because it's by Jason Kennedy. Um, I like to buy everything. I think it's important for me to make my own decision by reading things. And I have read this, as you can see. It's not a small book. Some of it, I mean, there are pictures of Marilyn. Um, but also Marilyn's family. There's certificates, birth certificates, death certificates, certification of various other things, newspaper clippings. Um, there's there's lots of different things in it but what it does do whether or not you like and approve of Jason Kennedy and I'm not going to get involved in that in any way shape or form on this forum that's not what this is about this book does give you a massive insight to Marin's family history and the myths that have surrounded her family history because contrary to the belief that she had no family, she actually had a very extended family. Whether or not they were actually interested in her and wanted to be a part of her life, I cannot say. I can only go by, it gives you a lot of background into her family history. And from that point of view, it's a valuable resource. I learned a lot about Marilyn's family that I did not know. About the Hogans, about the Monroes, um, and so on going back years and years and that some of her family was actually quite wealthy so there is a lot about her family history in here that you don't know so on the back it says this explosive and historic must-have book will change the entire way readers view the life and death of Marilyn Monroe written by relatives of Marilyn Monroe the authors painstakingly unravel the myths that have suffocated her legacy for over 50 years these myths have been regurgitated in biography after biography depicting Marilyn as an orphan girl and leaving her expansive lineage out of the equation. The facts support that Marilyn was surrounded with family and many members were upstanding citizens who contributed greatly to their communities. 
However, Hollywood, Marilyn's New York friends and her therapists, insulated Marilyn in order to profit off of the ultimate Cinderella story. I'm not going to get into that. I don't know whether that's true or not. It's not for me to say. That story was the myth of Marilyn Monroe, which was created to suffocate the truth behind Norma Jean Mortensen and her family history. It was eventually this forged fairy tale path and this cast of characters that squeezed funds out of Marilyn Monroe, as well as the final breaths out of the legendary star. The heirs of, of the opportunists who fleeced Marilyn of both her life and earnings still garner the monies through her name today. I'm not going to say that that's not true to an extent, because people do make money off of that. but so has Jason Kennedy and Jennifer G. Miller with their books. Not that that's a bad thing, because like I said, the, the career book, the Joe and Marilyn book that Jennifer G. Miller wrote is absolutely fantastic. I love it, the pictures in there are stunning. Um, so I, I do recommend that, it's a lovely book to pick up. And this does have a huge lot of history of her family and her ancestry in it. So from that point of view, it's definitely worth picking up. Um, if you can just stay out of the whole argument that goes on within the Marilyn community regarding Jason Kennedy, which I do. I, I'm not interested in it. I'm only interested in what people have got to say and I will judge things for myself because I am an independent person. I've got a mind of my own. I can read and make up my own mind. Um, but just for the information on her family tree, it's worth having. It's a really good read. Next one is another one of these silly self-published ones, uh, Mysterious Death of Marilyn Monroe. Uh, conspiracies over enigmatic demise of American Blonde by Olivia Green. Haven't read this. It's a little pamphlet I should do because you know it'll add to my reading for this year. And it says Marilyn Monroe is considered to be one of the most controversial figures in American history. She was an American actress and model who became noted during the 50s, but her death and the adjoining conspiracy theories make Marilyn Monroe an icon of mystery. Was it a murder or was it a suicide or an accidental overdose? No one clearly knows for sure, but a few people have a lot to tell. The book Mysterious Death of Marilyn Monroe, Conspiracies Over Enigmatic Dis Demise of an American Blonde is a humble attempt to revisit the grave of conspiracy and light up the assumptions behind the demise. So it's a small book, it's probably going to take about 20 minutes to read if I can just sit down and do it. And there's some nice pictures, nothing special, but they're nice ones. So I will, will read it. doesn't help that there's a, you know, hmm. I mean there's only, well, 33 pages long and then you got like something like five pages of six, well, ten pages of other books. Either by that author or that are related to this book. But yeah. And then the last two are the same book and I have reviewed this. There is a separate video for this on the channel. And that is uh, The Girl, Marilyn Monroe, The Seven Years from the Birth of an Unlikely Feminist because I was lucky enough to obtain a proof copy, a galley, um, an advance which I'm very happy to have in my book collection, uh, my Marilyn collection. I think it's, it's going to be very precious to me. And of course, I do have the final copy. These were both sent to me by the publisher. So I'm very, very grateful to Running Press for sending me these and for Michelle Morgan, the writer, for putting me on her, her uh, promotion list so that I get copies of all her books when they become available, before they become available. So, but this is the first arc I've ever received. So, I actually had a uh, had a, a net galley version as well. So, I've got to put the review up on net galley. So, yeah, that's the the proof. So, it's paperback. It's got some pictures in it, but they are all black and white. They're not all black and white in the finished copy. This is the finished copy. Um, not as much on the back as there is on the the arc, which looks like that. There's a lot of writing on the back. Um, is it what it says on the inside? Yeah. I'll just read it off the back of this. When Marilyn Monroe stepped over a subway grating as the girl in the seven year itch and a gust of wind catch the skirt of a dress, an icon was born. Before that, the actress was mainly known for her nude calendar and one dimensional characters on screen. Though she again played a dumb blonde in this film, the star was now every bit in control of her image and ready for personal revolution. The 18 months that followed was a period of greatest confidence, liberation and career success that Monroe lived in her tumultuous life. With an in-depth look over her two most empowering rebellious years, the summers of 54 to 56, the girl details how the seven year age sent Marilyn on an adventure of self-discovery and transformation from a controlled wife and contract player into a businesswoman and an unlikely feminist with ripple effects not only on Hollywood but in trailblazing the way for women that followed. Read it. This is a must buy. It's a beautiful book. It's not huge 
So if we put it next to this paperback of this, this is a normal paper, it's, it's of a similar height. But it is a beautifully done. Um, there is a, a section of photographs in the middle and there are some colour ones. So they've got that colour one there from this new business like show business. Colour ones from Seven Year Rich. Um, yeah, to studio. I'm not going to show you them all because I want you to go out and buy this book. So if I was refilming my 10 must have Marin Row books, this would be on the list. Absolutely no question, this would be on the list. So that, those are the 10 Marilyn books. I know it's technically nine because there are two copies of The Girl. Those are the 10 Marilyn books I've picked up um, in the last, I don't know, year. Um, but it doesn't seem to be so that the books are coming out still all the time. So you get a lot of these self-published ones that come out. And I, I do pick them up from time to time, but not all the time. I do like to try and pick them up. Um, and there's also some photo books that are due out. One of them apparently came out and then disappeared or never got released, something happened to it, I couldn't get, I can't get it anyway. Other ones keep getting delayed. I'm still waiting for Icon Volume 3, Gary, hurry up please, I can't wait for it. Um, but I know he's working on it, so that's fine. Um, but that's it, and that's what I think of the, the books I've read. Um, like I said, the, there were reviews of The Girl, and the, the unboxing of the Milton Green one. Man Row Unveiled should be mentioned somewhere on it, I don't think there's a separate video, but it would be in a wrap up because I have read it. And that's all the Marilyn books for you that I have this time. As soon as I've got another 10, I will of course make another one of these videos. Hopefully that will include the third book in the What She Knew trilogy. Because oh, I actually, it sounds really good actually. It says, it's fiction and I don't set much thought on fiction, but it sounds quite interesting. So I'm, I want to get stuck into that this month if I can. So that's everything for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you're a Marilyn fan, um, I'm sorting out some stuff at the moment. I can't get out in the attic. It's actually boiling because it's a, the temperature's around 30 degrees over here at the moment. And um, there's no way I'm going up in the attic to do stuff up there. I know I've promised to show you my plate collection. I will do it as soon as it starts cooling off and, and peanuts a bit older. So not that I'm going to leave her on her own because she, I don't want her dad to. But um, but I do have my Marion postcard collection um, handy. Would you like to see my postcard collection? Would you like to see my photograph collection? I can get that lot out and start showing you those in, in a separate video. They would be done like the colouring videos where you wouldn't see me, you'd just see all the items. I could show you which photograph, I, which postcard was that I bought first. And so on. Let me know if you're interested in that. Let me know if you've read any of the books and what you think of them. And I will see you all in the next video. See you later. Bye.